Hi there and welcome back to the studio today. In today's video I think that we're going to apply another layer onto this painting. Well it's kind of the same layer to be honest but uh, so we're going to continue applying the light shapes down to the, the shoulders, the arms, the hands, the books, and I think we're going to try and get the painting ready for the first color pass after today. At least that's what we're going to try to do. So what we have on the palette here shouldn't come as a surprise to most of you. Uh, what we have is titanium white, raw umber, and liquin. And liquin is going to be my painting medium, liquin original, I think it's called. Uh, so those of you that are new to this channel, if you want to know exactly what materials I'm using, uh, you can always go ahead and scroll down to the description box below, and all of that information will be typed up for you. And again, you know the drill. You know what I'm going to do. I'm mixing up a value scale on my palette. I just, I like to have a, a value scale to kind of just take uh, values from right away. It's not really, it's not really necessary, but I think that it saves quite a bit of time when it comes to the actual painting. And we get to know kind of where our uh, values lie in terms of their uh, relative lightness or darkness. So quite a bit of paint. Just using the liquid original to get the paint to flow a little more. It's also a fast dryer, which is something I really like. Let's get somewhere around here. And I think we're going to apply this value to the shirt. So, yeah, I think that's about the value that I want. So I'm going to go ahead and put in a flat shape for the light on the shirt. So with the shirt, I just want simple patterns of light and dark, and maybe we'll leave some of the tone of the canvas, just to kind of suggest a little bit of the half tones. So probably maybe right there in the middle. So light shape right over there. And there is a little bit of a fold over here that I didn't draw in originally, but I think we'll, we'll be all right leaving it like this. Who knows? So in terms of the relative value, I want this value to be lighter in general than uh, the hair. It's going to be the lightest region of value, but tell you what, I'm not going completely bright with it. See, we still have one more level uh, we can move up on the value scale, and then after that, there's still titanium white. So we're good in terms of our value scale. A little bit of a abstract shape there, just to get a little triangle of light. And um, I think about that, about that should do it. So one thing about oil paintings in particular, when they dry, they tend to fade a little bit, which is okay. If you want the original value, uh, the original values to come back, what you do is you apply your medium over it and it'll bring the original values back. So just keep in mind that these values are a little bit, um, should I say, less dark around here than if I were to apply a retouch or to oil it out and we'll most likely oil it out in I don't know in a couple of days don't want to oil it out every time though I think that's a mistake that I was making I wouldn't call it a mistake but that was something I was doing before and I think that oiling it out each sitting maybe isn't the best for the painting I don't know let me know what you do. Do you oil out your painting after each sitting? And those of you that don't know what I mean by oiling out, I mean literally getting your medium and applying it onto the surface to get the original values and colors back. So I think that should be about good for that. Now let's go ahead and take a look at, um, say this area. So we're going to want to recharge the middle range of the value scale. 
So just adding a little bit more of the raw umber. So we're just recharging this little area. Just adding quite a bit of paint and the medium until we get a consistency that's somewhat like somewhat like butter. Suppose you put butter in the microwave for a couple seconds that kind of creamy consistency. A little bit more. So the uh, local value for the arm is going to be a little bit darker or quite a bit darker than the local value for the face. At least it seems to me. So we're going to say, I don't know, right about here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply a little bit of a half tone here for the arm. So that value should be about good. Maybe it's getting too light. So just a little bit of a half tone around these lighter areas. Now remember a half tone just means a value that's kind of in between light and shadow. But within the half tones there's quite an array of different values that you can work with. So let's just cover the surface. So I think we're going to let's let's use the same brush and let's go back and forth between these planes. How about that? Leaving the light and dark distinction alone. Now remember the camera is at an angle with respect to the painting and as I've been doing the past couple days or the past couple sittings with this painting, um, I'll show you at the end of this painting or at the end of this sitting, the end of today's video, what the painting looks like with the camera as close to front and center as I can possibly get it. All right, so, um, so to tell you what, I've read some of the comments and some, some folks are very interested in the photo reference of Steve um, for where I would post it. I think I'm going to post the actual picture of it it's, itself on uh, my Instagram account. So you can go ahead and check that out after I ask Steve. So I'm going to see him tomorrow. Tomorrow we're going to venture off to my uh, portrait painting group and I'm going to do the best that I can to film it. Uh, a little better than last time and um, yeah when I'm there I'm gonna ask him if it's alright for me to post the picture itself uh, the photo reference that you're seeing up there in the corner on my Instagram account for those of you that want to follow along with the actual picture and of course you can screenshot the picture on the Instagram page or you can save it or favorite it or something but uh, that'll be a way to get you the image that you you've been suggesting so what we're gonna do here is we're gonna keep going back and forth between the values on the palette and we're going to be constructing these planes these larger planes so I know that the camera is a little bit further away so it's kind of hard to see what I'm doing here um, but when we move up to the hand I'm going to switch you to a close-up shot so you can see the hand so a little bit darker here as the uh, the muscles of the the arm starts to move right in towards the wrist yes I know I need to learn some more anatomy you know I used to know these terms it's quite a lot of strands of muscle going on down here creating these planes so this plane is lighter and it's because it's facing the light a little bit more let's get another brush here darker brush there so when more when <laughs> can't speak again when one form overlaps another form it creates this little uh, this thing that most of you know uh, by now the accent a little accent meaning an area right around here that 
uh, the light is being blocked off. All right, put that brush on the side there. Let's try to push this plane a little bit darker. Yep, to about there. Um, so I did mention something about uh, earlier about oiling out, and I think that I may want to oil out for the shadow of the arm, or tell you what, tell you what, let's get another brush. Whoops, so let's get another brush. Got a darker value, and just, there we go. So we're kind of oiling out with the oil that's on the paint, um, but we're also adding a little bit of a darker value of paint. And yes, I know that sounds kind of redundant. Let's just say that I'm painting a darker shape down here for the cast shadow of the arm, just to make sure that I don't lose the distinction between light and dark. And you know, there's a little bit of a light shape down there for, uh, see, I'm gonna have to switch brushes now. It's always good to have quite a bit of brushes in hand. So back to the value that we had for the shirt. It's a little bit of a light shape down here. There we go. I feel like Super Mario. Remember the Super Mario games? There we go. Anyway, there we go. So we have the little bit of the light shape there. Whoops. All right. So let's venture off down or over to the hand now. And I'm going to recharge the value scale on the palette just by adding more paint into the mid-tone region and into the lighter region of the palette. But I think that the values for the hand are going to lie somewhere around here and there, maybe with a little dark accent now and then. little more medium so I think that's it's about good for that now I'm going to switch brushes we're going to have a light brush and a dark brush so uh, or we'll just stick with one brush for now yep this this value so we're gonna use this value here for the, uh, the little darker plane for the hand, don't worry. I'm gonna put you in a close-up shot very soon. So I just wanna fill in this little darker shape and the, uh, the wrist bone is going somewhere up over there and it gets a little darker there. All right, so now you are in close-up with the hand. So I'm going to start to subdivide the shapes of value for the hand. And I am just hoping that the, um, the overall length of the metacarpals are not too, too short. Um, that was the mistake I made in the last painting. And um, I think it's really important to know that mistakes happen. And at least my philosophy is Mistakes are okay. Mistakes are a stepping stone to success. And the way that works with this is that I'm acknowledging and being open about the mistakes that I made in the uh, previous painting and just trying to learn from it and sharing the experience with you. So I think last time I focused a little bit too, I spent a little too long trying to um, render the hand, hoping that it would salvage a, a drawing mishap, meaning in the last one, I'm not going to talk about the last one too much since we're doing this, but in the last one I just had this distance too scrunched. So if this shape appears wrong, you can of course let me know in the comments and uh, we'll see how we can fix those shapes and these shapes. But in any case, let's go ahead and put in this darker shape for the finger and I'm just taking right from the valley scale on the palette. Now we're going to take a look at the lighter shapes, but now we're going to look at 
a little bit of a plain change. So right over here, it's going to be lighter. I'm kind of just using the same brush. Lighter right there around the knuckles. Switch to the darker brush. Might be too dark. I'm gonna have a little distinction there for the knuckle on one side. That knuckle goes down to this finger. It's gonna be another knuckle right over here. And then this is going to subdivide to a, a little tiny glimpse of the other knuckle. Somewhere about there. All right, so what I'm gonna try and do differently with this hand than um, with the last video is, or at least with the last painting, I know I'm talking about the last painting too much. Sorry about that. So I'm trying to learn from my previous mistakes. And again, I'm trying to present the reality of painting to you, not just the usual tutorial stuff that, I, that I've been doing in the past, even though, like I said, I promised, and um, hopefully I've been delivering with that Rembrandt that I posted yesterday. I am gonna do tutorial stuff once in a while, like I did in the past, but really what this is about is presenting the reality of being in the studio every single day. And it's a lot of fun. It's not the kind of fun that you would expect going on a roller coaster or something like that, but it's a different kind of fun. It takes a certain amount of concentration, effort. Uh, you, go, you kind of go through all the emotions in the, in the creation of a painting. So let's see, I think we can push a little bit more light around the pointer finger. There we go. And I'm being very mindful of how much time and energy I'm putting into each individual shape. Don't want to put too much, but I don't want to just slap on a brush stroke and then leave it be. I want to spend some time on these structures. And a little bit more light for that. that finger. Now the goal with this stage of the painting is to leave just enough information or leave the best information I possibly can to facilitate the next layer. And the next layer is going to be the color pass, the first color pass. Since this is a larger painting, there will probably be quite a number of layers. A little bit lighter there. So with the knuckles, there's a little knuckle here on the corner for the pinky. And again, simple and easy. Keep your shapes simple and easy, even when you're in this stage. So it's gonna be a little bit lighter near the top of the pinky over here. And then let's not lose the little delineation between the index finger and the pinky. I think I hope that's the index finger. But uh, that leads us to another interesting kind of topic. With hands, it's really, I think it's a good idea not to think so literally, even though I've been saying like, I've been telling you which finger I'm working on. Yes, it's important to keep track of the finger that you're working on, but think about it as shape. Try to abstract in your mind that don't think fingers, but rather think about this little, almost like elongated slice of pizza over here. It's like a little bit of a slice of pizza going all the way down here. See that? There's the crust. There's the bottom. 
and it'll get a little bit darker down here because this portion of the pizza is facing the light a little bit less. And then as we move around the side, right over here, it's going to get lighter. And that is because it's approaching the light a little bit more. And then this little area right there, this little pinky has a highlight. And that's all. That's all we need for that form to read. Maybe three or four values and the form will read in space. And of course, there's going to be a little drop off in value on the side here. Then it's going to pick up again. There. It's going to pick up a little more light right over here. Then it's going to drop off right over here. Getting a little bit darker as this shape is turning away from the light. And again, I really hope that you liked the, uh, the Rembrandt master study that we started. I thought it would be interesting to put in some different stuff once in a while. And I, I think I'm gonna keep doing that. I think I'm gonna look, look for a, a Velasquez or something. for the next master study after we finish the Rembrandt. What do you think? Let me know of an old master you'd like to see me uh, at least attempt to create a master study painting of. I'm thinking Velasquez. What do you think? Anyway, so this right here I think is the radius ulna bone, so the radius and the ulna going up there and creating this little light shape here. Now I'm not an anatomist and um, I, I don't know exactly what shape corresponds to what muscle, tendon or whatever. Um, so I'm going to give you the what's going on in my head. And sometimes what's going on in my head isn't correct. But it just, it gets us somewhere in the painting. My buddy Paulden Hamilton used to used to always say, and I'm sure he still says, uh, "Step forward in error," or something like, uh, "Move forward in in error." Uh, um, fantastic painter, fantastic teacher. He would always kind of just push that idea of not being afraid, just getting in there, making a mark, and going with it. It's going to be a little lighter here, and I think we're about wrapping up what we're going to do for this hand, and we'll move on to some other shapes. So I think I'm going to push the light a little bit on the finger, a little bit more light, still keeping these shapes simple and easy. We try to finish every spot one at a time. This painting could take a very long time. And we could do that, but maybe for another painting. All right, so I'm, I'm keying the light a little bit, keying the light. So for those of you that missed the past few videos, it's okay. Keying the light means pushing one light, so this one right there, and then relating the other light regions to that light. So uh, this light is telling me that this one is uh, it's actually good. But this light is telling me that perhaps there's a little shape of light there that could be pushed a little bit brighter. So this is how you key the light. You make a mark, of, you make a light shape, and you relate all the surrounding shapes to it. And that's all. You know, I think that this plane here 
it's going to get a little bit lighter for the knuckles. And that's just relating this shape of value to that one. But anyway, got to keep this simple. All right, I think I'm going to leave that be for now because my tendency is to just keep working and working and working on something. When I really should just be focusing on that simple relationship of light and dark and then pushing it. So just a few more little values here and we're going to move on. Gotta move on. So again, we're going to recharge the value skill on the palette. So we use the not that much paint for the hand, but I suppose for the book we might end up using a little bit more. And it's always just good to recharge the palette. And I think just with that, that ought to be good. And I think we're going to stick to... Hmm, I think we're going to stick to this little range of value. Let's go ahead and add in a little light shape here for the book. Very simple. Single brush stroke for that. And now... We're going to get a darker value, just a little bit darker. Maybe that's too dark. So let's get a lighter shape. Try to keep it very, very simple. Now, uh, areas that are a little chromatic in color are a little tricky in value, just a little tricky. So um, what I mean is the blue on the book, so the little blue shape there that you're seeing, it's a pretty tricky value just because the saturation, it's so bright. And just like the tablecloth is um, really bright, and by bright I mean it's like a very saturated color. So the thing is to make sure that this shape doesn't get as light as this shape. So what we're gonna do is uh, get a different brush, and um, just push this a little bit darker. Maybe it's too dark, but I think that's all right. Should be okay for now. So we will know if this is too dark by putting in the accent mark. So let's go ahead and do that. Getting a different brush here. Accent mark. There we go. See, we didn't go too dark. So we can still have another darker value to go. Down here. Yep. Should be good. See, look how quickly we can get the, the illusion of something three-dimensional, and talking about the book, in space with very few values. It's amazing what we can do with just value. And again, um, for those of you that are new to this channel, the reason that we're constructing this underpainting in monochrome is to solve the question of shape, proportion, and structure. Not necessarily in that order, but it could be in that order. Uh, the thing is, it's much easier to develop form, to develop perspective and structure without having to worry about color. Color can always be added on. Can always be added on in the next layer. And this is also kind of a way of seeing. We're seeing in sequence. You know, to me, this book could be purple. It could be pink. Whatever it is, doesn't matter to me right now. What I'm thinking of is where is this book existing in space in this composition? 
and how can I uh, make it appear like it is in this composition, like it is in this same space. But anyway, now we're going to move on to this little area here. So uh, let's relax a little bit. So what, what's on this brush? I don't even remember. Let's test it out. And that looks about good. So this might be one of the best areas to talk about planes because these are literally planes. Um, so this is one plane in relation to the light that has an angle, very specific angle. Now you can relate the plane of this area of the book and you can relate it to this area of the book. Now if the light, imagine the light's coming in this direction it's hitting this area more than this area. Now I know that some areas in the book are just lighter just because, you know, like there's blue here and then white there. But anyway, we're not thinking about that. Thinking about the angle of the light hitting there. So this is closer to perpendicular than this. This plane is actually a little bit further angled. So this plane is angled a little further away from the light. So all that means is that this value here is going to be lighter than this value, but not as light as this value. See, that was a mistake, but you know what? I think we can actually push this light a little bit lighter. How about that? There we go. I think that's I think that's a little better actually. Yeah, why not? And then we'll add this little light shape here. Now I know that this value is lighter simply because that area on the book is lighter and um for those of you that are wondering how how to get all of those little small details and nuances in the book, you really want to think about the little details after you get the large structure established. So this book existed before the type that was put into the book, meaning like the font and the picture and all of that stuff. So what we're doing essentially is constructing the book and even the book itself was painted. The, um, see, I'm telling you things that I don't really know how to justify. Just bear with me. Um, think about this like a, like a house, like you're constructing a house. Um, so the linear drawing that we constructed for this painting was analogous to maybe the, the framework of the house. The, um, now this underpainting that we're putting in is kind of analogous to the putting in the drywall and like all of the floors in the house. Okay, picture that. This is analogous to putting in the drywall, the floors and all of that stuff. Once we have all of those structures established on our house, then, and only then, will we be able to put in the color of the wall for the house. Now, it doesn't always have to be that way in painting, but I, I just think that having this kind of process just simplifies everything. So, I think I accidentally, as I was talking, I didn't pay attention to these shadows here and I kind of lost them. It's okay. Go ahead and put them back. This is a shadow. See this? Following down. So this is a shadow being casted by that globe onto the book. It's very important not to lose light and shadow shapes. And um, while we're working on this painting, Let's also talk about the narrative of the painting. So again, like I said before, this is a, a narrative painting. So our model Steve there is like an explorer and he's looking at 
all of this stuff. He's looking at an atlas, a map of the world. Um, I think that is an atlas. Anyway, he's looking at a map and he's in deep thought. He's thinking quite a bit. So um, I don't know what I'm going to name this painting after it's done. And again, all I'm doing is just covering this shadow that's being casted from the globe. But anyway, well, what do you want to name this painting? I know we still got quite a long way to go until this painting is finished, but I don't know. I think it's an interesting idea to play around with the idea of what are we going to name this painting. So go ahead, leave your comments down below. What will we name this painting? All right, so now I'm thinking that we're going to start to put in these light shapes and let's not be fearful of the details. Let's just throw in some paint. Just throw in some paint. Now this isn't straight up white and it's pretty much from the same puddle that I took the book from. And I think we're just going to unify this into just a few simple shapes of light. So right around here. Just like that, very simple. Keep your shapes simple and easy. This adds a very important element to the composition and that is the effect of light. I think that ought to be about good for that. Uh, what do you say we move on to the other hand? So for the, for the other hand, we're gonna think about the cast shadow. So let's go ahead and get this darker brush the shadow being casted from this finger. Shadow being, oh, you know what? It's not that light, I mean dark. So let's make it a little bit lighter. Not that much lighter. Uh, let's say to about there. And now we're gonna go ahead and put in the shadow being casted from this finger. Now I do know that I changed the um, the way this hand is. So this is different than what you're looking at the photo reference. And that's just because, I don't know, I just wanted this pointer finger to extend out. because so I feel like it's just too simple. If all of the fingers are pointing towards the face, I want something to stick out. So that's why I made that little change. And that just goes to show that you don't always have to paint the way things look. If you want to change things, you can change them. No problem in that. So there's going to be a shadow being casted from this finger here. All right, so now we can move on to the uh, lighter shapes or the fingers. And we're going to treat the fingers very simple and easy. First, we're going to put in some darker shapes. So darker shapes right around here. One form meets another form. You guessed it. Accent mark. And like I've been saying the past few days, um, Using raw umber, I really like using raw umber for underpaintings just because it doesn't get as dark as burnt umber. And burnt umber doesn't get as dark as ivory black. So really sticking with the umbers is a really nice little uh, way to, to, uh, I can't speak today. It's a nice way to compress your value range. That's the word, compress the value range which will allow us in this area here, this is the darkest we can go with the raw umber, but when we transition into the color pass, we will have yet another range of values darker that we can go there, which will only serve to strengthen the development of the form. That's what we're after, form and light, light and form. So now that we've established the darker areas on the fingers, 
Now we'll just go ahead and uh, add in the lighter shapes. Why not? Now there's going to be a very definitive plane change here. And I'm going to want to put that in very soon. So let's go ahead and put that in now. So this little area of the finger is actually angling away from the light. Whereas this area here is angling towards the light. So it's going to get brighter. And so is this area of the pointer finger and the this is an imaginary pointer finger because we're we moved his finger from there the pointer finger was there the thumb is there you're seeing the thumb there in the photo reference this is all from my imagination because I just wanted to change the way the finger looks and hopefully if I can remember tomorrow uh, when we work from life hopefully I can re-photograph his hand in this position but if we can't, eh, it'll be all right. Just goes to show you, you, don't always have to copy down what you're looking at. Leave room for creativity. Um, so now the fingernails, I don't think I'm really gonna mess with them much for the underpainting. If anything, I think we'll just leave a few little, a little indications of them. Dark shape there. There. And here. That's the pinky. So pinky, index finger, middle finger, pointer finger, and the thumb is somewhere behind the book. And again, I am changing the way it looks from the photo reference. A little bit lighter there. These planes are facing the light a little more. A little bit more light here on this area of the pinky. Hopefully, that's believable in space now. You know me. You know I struggle with hands. You know, I titled a video. <laughs> I think I titled a video saying I struggle with hands. That's why I'm saying keep those shapes simple and easy. Because, as you know, what I'm going to say, when the time comes to make changes, those so changes will be simple and easy to manage. A little bit lighter there, and I think that shape is looking a little strange for that finger. So what I'm gonna do, move that shadow up a little bit. A little darker over there. And I'm going to blur it a little bit, when in doubt, blur it out. So I'm going to be just softening this edge a little bit, just so I don't draw attention to this hand. I want to keep this hand very quiet. Very chill. So I think that ought to be about all, all right for now for the hand. So what do you say we move on to the other lighter shapes? So how about we establish a dark brush, light brush, middle brush. So this will be the dark brush. It doesn't have to contain the darkest dark and it definitely won't just because it already had some uh, of the titanium white in it. So that'll be our dark brush. And this will be our middle brush, a little bit more medium there middle brush, light brush. And then we have, of course, the dark accent creating brush off to the side. All right, so let's go ahead and paint in some more of these lights. 
All right, so we have something pretty interesting going on with the camera angles right now. So since this is a larger painting, I have the main camera here, um, kind of closer to the middle, which is pushing me further back. And so um, this is something I've also wondered about how the old masters painted larger portraits or larger paintings in general. So I'm going to be working on this area of the, uh, the painting. The photo reference, as you know, I'm looking at a TV screen all the way back there. So I'm going to try the best that I can to look at the photo reference. Keep the camera here so you can see the image not as distorted. And um, so, yeah, this is going to be kind of an adventure. So let's go ahead and add in. So let's go ahead and add in a little light shape for the book this one right here and let's look for the lightest plane first and I think that the lightest plane is going to be this one just trying to get a very simple shape for that that ought to do. So the next shape is going to be down here and it's going to be a plane that is angling a little bit away from the light and again this is a really good um, way to look at planes because these are literally planes. So this plane is facing the light a little bit more. Now see how this one has a different angle so um, yeah it has a different angle and therefore a different value associated to it. So it's going to be dark but not that dark. It's going to be really close to the, uh, the value of this, but just slightly, slightly darker. And um, again, this is going to be one of those things that I'm going to say, that I usually say, try to work from nature as much as possible. Because the photograph, I'm thinking that the photograph is probably making this value um, too close to this one. I think. A little bit lighter there. Let's get a clean, hopefully clean, a clean brush just to push this shape up. There we go, kind of also acting as an eraser. All right, so they still, it's a very delicate balance now between these values still can get a little bit lighter. Let's use the eraser. So once again, let's try to make it a little bit lighter. So that may be the value that I'm after. Very, very elegant balance between these values. And I think that ought to be about good for that. Now the next area to look at is going to be here. So this is going to be darker than this and darker than this, but not that dark. So back to the, let's, let's get the middle tone brush and let's just get what was already on it, see what happens. So this was just a value that was already on the brush. I think that's working all right. Again, might be too dark, but we'll see. Let's go ahead and put the shape in first. Then we'll stand back and evaluate it after we stand back. Pretty neat how I didn't have to mix anything. Anything new, just took what was already on the middle tone brush. So I'm standing back, and I think that's about good. Perhaps the light brush, so perhaps I can push this shape uh, up a little more. So adding a little more refinement to the shape. There we go. Again, I sound like Super Mario. <laughs> there we go. Those of you that know about the, the Nintendo 64 games or 
Oh, the other Super Marios. I like, I like Mario Kart. But anyway, back to painting. So let's go ahead and push this. So that is the accent, or one form, literally, literally the top of the book is meeting the other form, meaning the pages of the book. Just like that. We're also going to need one there. So let's go ahead and put that in there. Super simple. Now, there's going to be a light shape over here. And um, I think that, actually, uh, I want to put this shape here. Sorry, I'm kind of all over the place right now. There's a cast shadow being casted from the finger. There we go. Anyway, um, there's going to be a lighter value here now associated with the, um, the top plane of this book. But to be honest, it doesn't bother me. I might leave that alone. Uh, so the next thing I'm going to do is put in some light for the globe. And that might be one of the last things that I'll do for it today. I'm gonna go ahead and get the middle tone brush. Just what was already on it. So that is the middle tone. Simple and easy. Now, still with the middle tone, I'm gonna go ahead and put in this little shape here. Switch to the light brush. Very fast, not even mixing. Put in this little light shape for the corner of the globe. And this is for the little metal thing. The little metal, whatever that's called, the thing that holds the globe. Switching to the dark brush. This is a metallic area, so it's going to reflect a little bit and get darker around here. That leaves that. Switching back to the half tone brush, just putting a little more paint. And we're going to put that shape in there. A little darker. There we go. Very simple. Now we're going to get the light brush. Look for the lightest area first. Lightest area is going to be right about there, and that's going to be a plane that's receiving the most light. It's most perpendicular towards, it's most perpendicular to the angle of the light. Well, now I'm going to get the half tone brush. Just kind of, actually, I'm going to have to add more paint onto the half tone brush. And again, just mixing in the half tone region. And I'm going to make take note of one thing, and that's going to be the relationship of the value of the globe to the value of the book. Now, the photograph, I think, is blasting this value too much, and I'm accidentally recording down what I see from the photograph. But in nature, in nature, that wouldn't be as dark. It just wouldn't. Just trust me on that. This won't be, this won't be as light as this. This is a white, white-ish color. This is not. This is blue. It's just glaring. The photograph is blasting this value. So I'm going to try and not blast it like the photograph is doing. Once we get enough paint, we'll just go ahead and start to sculpt out these planes. Little bit darker down here these planes are turning away from the light so they're getting darker no need to worry about a perfect finish for this globe we've got plenty of time to come back and add more information no worries now switching to the dark brush I can push the shadow a little darker, 
right around here. So just with the dark brush, I'm putting that shape in there. Switching to the middle tone brush. We're going to kind of create a very soft, very soft and quiet gradation of form. Super simple, just switching back and forth between the middle tone brush and the dark brush. See that? Easy, easy way to create these gradations of form. And I'll push this down a little bit more. We're nearing the end for today. We're almost done. Just going to soften this shape a little bit more. Very simple. So the globe, I did push it a little bit darker than the photograph is telling us it is in relation to these books. But I do think that there's going to be kind of a a brightish, a brightish highlight. Now the globe isn't completely matte. It will have a little bit of a highlight. So let's just return that highlight back to its rightful spot. Hopefully that's where it is. Almost forgot about the light on the glasses. So I want to put a little bit of light for the glasses. And again, this is going to be super simple, easy and quick. So highlight on the side of the glasses, highlight on the rim. Or should I say the frame? I should know these terms. I do wear glasses. A little bit of light there. Doesn't have to be perfect circle, no worries. A little bit of light there. A little bit of light here and there. Let's throw in another little glimpse of light here. And I think that'll be about it for that. So I think that the painting is now ready to let it dry and then start to put in the first color pass. So in tomorrow's video, uh, we're going to venture off to the uh, portrait painting group that I run and um, we're going to apply the first color pass for the face from life. And I'm going to do the best that I can to not mess up the camera footage um, like I did last week. Of course, mistakes are a stepping stone to success and I have learned my mistake from the camera angles that I had uh, last week. So in tomorrow's video, we're going to start to apply some color onto this painting. That being said, uh, for those of you that uh, has, have expressed an interest in supporting me on Patreon, I have been working on my Patreon account for uh, a while now. So that is almost about ready. So be on the lookout for my Patreon account. I'm almost ready to get the thing actually up and running. So anyway, I hope that today's video helps you out. I wish you the best in all of your hard work. And as always, I'm trying to bring the experience of being here in the studio, creating these paintings. I really want to bring the experience of being in the studio to you. I wish you the best in all of your artwork, and I'll be back again tomorrow. And as promised, here is a view of the painting after today, um, after today's painting session. So here's a view of the painting with the camera pretty much as close to front and centered as I can possibly get it. So again, um, I can't paint with the camera directly front and center because, well, the most obvious thing now is the glare. It's, the painting is starting to glare quite a bit, quite a bit, which means that it's just reflecting light from my uh, studio lighting. And another thing is it still distorts, like I've mentioned before. Uh, there's still a little bit of distortion that you can tell on the corner of the side of the canvas. But anyway, this is what the painting looks like 
with the uh, most minimal distortion that I can um, get. So I wish you the best in all of your artwork and I'll be back again tomorrow.